Okay, class, we're back. Okay, during the uh, switchover, I checked the math, and uh, it was correct. All right, so let's go over that. So I don't want to confuse anyone on this. This is the number 10 on uh, the roof drain problems. All right, that hand is actually the one that um, you should have in, you should have there tonight. Uh, number 10 was the one about the 35-inch gasket with an 18-inch hole. Uh, for some reason, I thought it looked small, but it's square inches, not cubic. I was just I just uh, drew a blank on that. So 35-inch gasket, you multiply 35 by 35, and you come up with uh, 1225 times 0.7854. You just follow with me. The left column is the size of the gasket if it was like a one solid piece uh, with no hole in it comes up to 962. Now the other, the second column is the size of the hole, which is in the middle of it. That's an 18 inch hole. So it's the same formula. So it's 18 squared times 0.7854, which is 324 times 0.7854. And that comes up to 254.4 uh, square inches. Okay, so with that, Again, looking at that that handout, on the right side, I put 962.1 minus 254.4. And I, I, I did this one longhand, and I che just checked it with the calculator. It's fine. And it comes up to uh, the answer is how many square inches would be in that giant gasket would be 707.7 .7 square inches. Okay, so make a note of that, 707 square inches all right again hang on to this uh this page for your information okay i don't plan on coming back to the uh roof drains again maybe at the very end of class the end of the uh the cycle but not not for a while if we do it at all okay let me make a note of the time here i don't want to go over again okay so let's put that away and go back to uh, that chapter on uh, stormwater and sump pumps. Okay, so let's go where we left off. All right, I was talking about stormwater, sanitary um, water, and uh, dry wells and so on. Now, I don't have much experience with dry wells. I dug one at my old house. Oh, geez, it was back in the early 70s. I could dig a lot better then. And I just dug a hole like a tie to dig and filled it with loose stones, put some top paper around it, and put the clothes wash into it. I had a very old septic tank with little or no leaching field. And for some reason, it never acted up. In any case, that would be called a dry well. All right, so let's move on from dry wells. Uh, remember now, a sanitary sewer or a sanitary system goes usually into the city sewer, but out in the country, it would go into a septic tank. You guys that do new houses know that. In some towns, like Somerset, uh, there are both town sewer, which were put in, I believe that was in the 70s when they built that treatment plant. And then in the on the outskirts of the town, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, septic systems. Then you got towns like Swansea, Little Compton, I know very well. There's no sewage system at all. It's all um, septic tank. Or in the case of possibly a few houses that have fallen through the cracks and been owned by the same person for many, many years, could even have a cesspool. Now, for those of you who don't know what a cesspool is, just picture a tank, usually a round tank, could even be built with stones. And all the water, sewage, and everything goes in, and then it leaches into the soil. Okay, obviously not a very good system. I guess they used to pump them out a little before my time. They probably had a cover where they'd pump it out when it all blocked up. But the system, it, I can't imagine why it didn't block up where it left the tank. You know, even with the holes in the tank, where did it go? But that's a cesspool. Now, the uh, septic tank, I believe we've already covered this year. In fact, I know we have. It goes into the septic tank, 1,000 gallon or so. Then from there, directly into the... Uh, 
distribution box, which is a very small tank. I don't think that's more than 50 gallons, but it's really just a tank with a bunch of holes in it. So that one big pipe coming in on that big pipe or the one very busy four inch pipe goes into maybe four or five pipes and out into the leaching field where it, uh, the water goes into the gravel and then it evaporates through the soil. That's why they're never too deep in the ground. Okay, so that's a, that's an example of a sanitary system. You would never put storm water in there. It would just fill up the system. Now, what would happen if storm water went in there? This happened in my daughter's house maybe 10, 15 years ago. She had an old septic system. I don't know what it had for leaching field, if it even had one. And when we had a wet season, this is down Little Compton, the water would go into the tank and it would... Uh, fill up the tank and she was having it pumped like once a month and obviously that gets expensive and pretty soon we had an exceptionally wet period one time and uh she was getting up to the point where she was pumping her tank like once a week and the water was almost clean um so what was happening water the groundwater was up so high it was going right into the system into the tank so that's the problem when um storm water gets into the sewer system it's the only house i've heard of what that would happen but again i was never involved with uh septic tanks so people wouldn't be calling me or you to uh, solve that problem uh okay french drain all right some of you guys most of you guys have probably heard of a french drain some of you might know more about it than i do but a french drain is a trench drain so if you had uh, like water coming down a driveway and you had a garage you didn't want the water to like fly into your garage. You'd have uh, right across the front there, you might have like a, a grill, like a screen type thing with gravel. And the water would go into that and probably have a pipe in the bottom with holes in it. And it would divert the water away from there. So the water would go in there before it got into your garage. Okay, that's an example of a French drain. Uh, let's see. All right, now this one here, and now I haven't done a new house, and I don't hate to admit how many years it's been, but when I was doing new houses, when I was in business, and I was still doing some work when I was teaching, so you know, it's back in the 80s, if not the early 90s, probably the early 90s was the last house I did. Um, we were doing perimeter drains. We didn't do them. We never did. Now, most new houses were built on... Uh, about three inches of gravel, right, in the basement. And the gravel used to come up to the top of the footing. The footing would go in first, then the gravel, right? And the water, um, would there be room for like, say, three inches of water under the gravel. And then outside of the footing, I can't remember now if the footing was on gravel or not. It's been so long. I don't think so. No, I don't remember it being on gravel. But in any case, it doesn't matter. Outside the footing, on the outside, there was more gravel, deep gravel. That's where the perimeter, what we call the perimeter drain. The book does not refer to it as a perimeter drain. So if you guys got a different name, let me know. So just picture it, new house, footing, foundation wall, gravel in the floor, and then three or four inches of concrete. So the gravel was top of the, uh, the footing and the concrete would go over the footing and over the gravel, right across. On the outside, in the gravel, there'd be a four inch sewer and drain pipe. Now sewer and drain pipe, if my memory's right, is schedule 40. PVC is schedule, excuse me, schedule 20. Schedule 40 is your everyday PVC. Schedule 80 is that gray uh, PVC, high pressure PVC. I used it once in my life. Actually, I tied onto it. I didn't even use it. I just tied onto it. Um, not that common, but sewer and drain pipe. This is the pipe, if you remember, the one that's solid without any holes in it. If one piece slides into the other, it's like swedged, like a piece of copper, where the uh, one, one end is a little bit bigger so you can slide the pipes together. The sewer and drain pipe with holes in it is what they use around the foundation. As I remember, it, it's four inch pipe. Again, I seen it, never put it in. It's got nothing to do with plumbing. And once they went around the foundation, the B, I guess it was a T, a TY, and they diverted the water away from the house to a, like a dry well, which I never really got involved with. Again, it was none of my business and I was there to, you know, do my own thing. And the book here mentions about 
taking that water and pumping it up and into a uh, like a storm drain out in the street. Well, there are no storm drains around here that I'm aware of any of the local towns. Uh, like I said, it was always pumped, um, not pumped, excuse me, went by gravity to divert it away from the house. Now, I have heard of sewage, even uh, whole septic systems where uh, the water had to be pumped up to get into an above ground uh, septic system. I've never been involved with it, but I've heard there's such things. They're fine. And the book does mention when you got a situation like that, where you got to pump up, whether it's a stormwater or, or especially for a um, septic system, you lose your electricity. Unless you got a backup, you got a big problem. Okay. Um, that would be. Now, again, what I'm doing is just summarizing some stuff that I, I read this chapter pretty carefully. And I'm just summarizing some of the stuff that's in here. This is chapter 24, Stormwater. So we have uh, that drain that goes around the house. Now, this happened to me. I almost forgot. Definitely want to tell you about it. One time I ended up with a clothes washer in the basement. It was on the wrong side of the cellar, and I was really screwed. I don't remember how we solved it. And I was toying with the idea of going into the storm drain because it was right there. It was going to be very easy, and it's gray water, not a big deal. And uh, I think it was a contractor. Somebody who had been around, I must have mentioned it to him. And he says, no, don't even think about it. So I think he knew he'd seen this done before. He said, if you put gray water like that, that smell of that uh, water coming out of the clothes washer will eventually like go bad and you're stuck with it because now it's like under the house. He says, don't even, don't go there. Don't do it. So I didn't. I forgot how we get out of the problem. You know, most times there is a way out of it. It just might be more money. So I didn't, I didn't. Uh, it was just a, a thought. It was an idea. I didn't do it. In any case, don't put anything into that perimeter drain. All right? It's not a safe drain to put even gray water in. So stay clear of that. You don't even see it. Oh, now, if I remember right, it's about the same height. as It's coming back to me now. So just picture the outside of the foundation when there's gravel out there. This pipe is deep. It's, I think it's around the same height as the, the footing, roughly. So it's pretty far into the, uh, you know, it's pretty low. Now, old houses don't have that. Old houses have nothing. All right, you go outside the house. If you go back far enough, like before, say, 1940 or so, every tenement in Florida is built like this. It's got those gigantic granite uh, rocks. I don't even know how they got them into place. Uh, and the walls are two, three. You guys that have worked in them know this. They're two, three feet thick. And uh, if anybody here has ever tried to hammer through them, um, I think you remember that you didn't get there. Right. This stuff is so hard. Um, I don't know if a Corbett would not a Corbett that we would have access to could drill through that. I tried. You can chip it a little bit, but I found that if I ever had to go through a, a, a wall like that, usually the city sewers are below the floor. So you're you say once in a great while, you got to go through the wall, find a place in the wall where there's like a junction of the rocks and see if you can work your way through it. You're not going to be punching holes through the granite. So at least I never seen it done. Okay, so um, that would be your, uh, what they call French drains, trench drains, perimeter drains, excuse me. Now, I know of a house, um, somebody I know had an older house, and he had a cellar water problem, knew that there was nothing outside. Now, most old houses, to dig down deep enough would mean trashing any trees or bushes or flower beds or anything else that's out there, patio, who knows what, porch. So it's not usually an option to put a perimeter drain in an old house. Sounds good, works on paper. Just dig it up, put your gravel in, put your pipe in, and so on. No, forget it. So what, what happens is this, you leave that alone, you go in the basement. Now this is messy and noisy. I, I never got stuck with the job, but uh, I've seen it done a few times. What they do is to hammer down through the floor all the way around the inside perimeter of the house, right? All the way around, and you do the same thing inside as outside. The book mentions you can do it either inside or outside. Around here, I've never seen it done inside unless it was like a, uh, what do you call that, a remodeling type thing where it's a after the fact, an old house. So you'd have to cut the floor up. These days, probably with one of those electric saw. If you've got a poured floor, if it's dirt floor, it's a bonus. And 
Now you're gonna say, ah, oh, dirt floor. Uh, those of you who haven't done much digging, here's the deal. Any dirt that's never been dug up before, like under a foundation or under the floor, um, it's rock hard, right? You hit it with a pick and you might go in a couple inches. It's so hard. You, sometimes you might even get your big chipper for your uh, your drill, not your drill, your uh, electric hammer. And you might have to, it might be easier to chip it out, okay? especially clay. It gets so hard. Um, so putting a perimeter drain on the inside is something you probably want to leave for someone else. Okay, if you got a house someday and you got to put it in, that's how you do it. Just do right around the whole cellar and put this pipe in, then figure a way to get the water away from the house. Or get a sump pump and have the sump pump hooked up to maybe make your own like drywall pit. Not drywall, but a sump pit where the pipe come, comes in. Now, this would be the sewer and drain pipe, Schedule 20. Schedule 20 with uh, holes in it. And the holes would be facing down. So if the water went in, right? It would go in the pipe, go right around to the sump pit that you have. And when the water went in the pit, the sump pump would uh, pick it up on a float and pump it, you know, technically, you know, what do you call it? Ideally, pump it out. If you didn't lose electricity, the pump didn't quit, whatever. Or the pipe didn't freeze on the outside, which I've seen that a number of times. I think what happens is maybe when it snows, gets a little slushy, even with some pitch on it, um, it freezes and you're out of luck for weeks at a time. Okay, the uh, let's see what else we got there. Okay, sump pump. A little bit about sump pumps. I've done a few jobs where I took some time and I put in a submersible sump pump. Now, what a submersible means is it's not like the homeowner version. It's on a, I think they call it a pedestal. It's about three feet high. It's on a post and it's got a float on a, uh, works almost like a ball cock on a toilet, right? The float goes up and down as the water builds up uh, they could be installed right on the floor itself but it works better if it's in a pit because the water sometimes will get to the sump pump before it actually goes up on the floor especially if there's gravel under the floor now the one that's really fancy and uh, works really well if you've got gravel under the floor is the submersible sump pump so what you do is cut a hole in the floor of the, uh, in the basement nice and neat uh, maybe get a, a you know a concrete cutting blade and you know cut something out. I'm I'm saying 18 by 18. I'm making up a number, and you get a submersible pump. Now this is a small pump, no post, and it, you dig a hole deep enough and line it with cement block or cement uh, brick. Right, nice neat job. Okay, get up to the top, and then make a plywood cover. And have it finished so when you put the plywood cover on, the plywood cover is flush with the concrete floor. It looks pretty slick. And the only thing you you have to cut a hole for the, uh, the pipe coming out of it and the wire going in, if I remember right. That's all you have. Okay. Um, nice job. And then you would pipe it to <clears throat> wherever, to the outside. Um, and in the city of Florida, I guess you could pipe it into the uh, into the, the drain of the of the uh, the basement. In fact, they used to be like I told you, they'd come into the basement from the the roof down the uh, down the downspout and back into the basement in cast iron pipe and join the building drain inside the basement. And I believe there was a trap there somewhere. I don't know that I ever connected to it, but I remember seeing it. Uh, some towns, like I think this was over in Middletown, Newport. Um, yeah, it was Newport. It was over near the reservoir near First Beach. And uh, the uh, the guy had a serious, serious water problem. And uh, I had to hook up a sump pump. And I'm trying to remember now. I think we diverted it outside. Um, the city didn't want him to tie it into the uh, into their sewage treatment system. Because, and I think we went over this in class, a new house or any house, the septic system is designed based on the number of bath, uh, not bathrooms, excuse me, bedrooms. And if I remember right, 150 gallons per bedroom was the standard they used. Now, what it would mean is like as an average, each bedroom in the house, will say there's one, two people in the bedroom, but it would average about 150 gallons per day per bedroom. So in a three bedroom house, you'd have a 450 gallon usage. And that's what they designed the septic for and so on. 
the problem is if that was water um, was in a going into the sewage system, like in Newport, and um, we'll say it was, I don't know that that was a combined system. I don't know Newport that well. Um, but they didn't want that storm water going into the sewage system. Because if it did, think about this, if it went into the sewage system, it wouldn't be 450 gallons. It might be several thousand gallons, especially if you had a very wet cellar and a busy sump pump, right? They can pump out some quite a lot of water. That's an inch and a quarter pipe. So that's what they don't want. And I know we went over this in class, but remember I told you about a, a clean out at the wall, a floor clean out just before the building drain leaves the house is built up in the air several inches. And the reason is so you don't get tempted to just pop that clean out cover and use it as a floor drain and have an extra two, 3,000 gallons of water every time you got a rainstorm where you're only paying for 450 gallons. Okay. Uh, there is another town. I've seen that. I don't, can't remember now where it was, but um, that's a deal with some pumps. Like I said, I've done that a few times. Nice job. You, you know, take you half a day probably to do it. And uh, looks good. They end up with a nice, uh, you know, underground sump pump. And the way that sump pump works is it's kind of like a sewage ejector pump. It's got to be in the water or it's going to fry itself. The one on the pedestal, the cheap one, uh, the pump is up in the air. It's, you know, it's very visible. Uh, this one's out of sight, below the floor. Now, you've seen ads on TV. There's some, there's some pump geeks, I don't know, something like that. They come and actually service these sump pumps. I can't even imagine what they, what they charge for that. But uh, every once in a while, you could tell the owner, you know, trip the trip the switch on it, flood it with water, and make sure it's working. Don't let it sit there for years on end before you expect it to work. Okay, uh, let's see how we're doing for time. All right, we're almost uh, a little bit of time left, not much. Um, now, on page 425, there's a picture of a uh, roof drain. And um, take a look at it. You've all seen these, I'm sure, unless you're, this is your, you haven't been in the trade for more than a couple of months. You've probably seen these roof drains. And uh, the roof drain has that dome on the top. I guess that would keep all the, the leaves and all that other stuff from falling inside. Now, the floor drain. Now, the other thing about a roof drain is uh, the rubber roof. I remember, I guess it was in the 80s when the last time they did some rubber roof, uh, not rubber roof, some roof work, put root drains up. The, the contractor told me, um, just put, you know, just cut, uh, just cut the hole, we'll, we'll fix it. Okay, they did, right? They, they want to do their own repairs on the rubber roof. It's very much like an old bicycle tire. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is the floor drain. There's a picture there of a floor drain. Now, for those of you who haven't seen floor drains like this, they actually swivel up and they you spin it and it goes down. Now, they use those for mud shower. So if you have any high-end customers, and some of you guys have probably already run into this, they have a shower stall custom made, made from scratch. And you get a copper pan or you get this. Now, a lot of guys are probably using that rubber. It's like a rolled rubber that you put and you tack it up on the two bys all the way around and you got a drain in the middle it looks like this floor drain i think you're using a plastic one if i remember right years ago we used to use like the one in the picture there but uh it was actually bra brass and would solder it onto the copper pan and leave it for the uh the uh, mason you know putting the mud the sh you know the cement in that copper pan and uh he would be the one that would spin that uh, drain to the height he wanted, right? And then hit tile it. So when you came back, it was all done. You know, the drain was all mudded in there and at the right height, you didn't have to touch it. So you just leave it for him. And then remember, you'd have the uh, cement, cement board around the walls and he'd put the tile on it. And you didn't put the cement board up. We just did the shower faucets to make sure you allowed enough for the cement board. You'd ask the contractor, of course, what do you put on the wall? Cement board and quarter inch tile. Okay. And that's how much you would allow with the valve. And then he would fit his cement board over it and tile around it. Okay. That's called a mud shower for those of you who haven't done much residential work. Okay. I think, um, yeah, it's a little bit early, but the last video was pretty long. I believe we've covered it all. Okay. So, uh,
what I'd like you to do is after you see these two videos, I'd like you to do the questions at the end of this chapter. I believe that's on page 427. They're very easy. And um, then the next thing I'd like you to do, and I'll, I'll leave it um, on the notes. Hold on. Uh, my stuff all moved around here when I shifted gears there. Page um, 101. This is a math uh, chapter, and I'll, I'm not going to tell you it's not hard. It's pretty, it's tough. It's tougher than these other ones. Some of these are pretty easy. If you just pay attention, they're pretty straightforward. This one is tough because it's, it is math. Uh, so if you take a look at it, if you want to take a take a whack at the questions at the end, go right ahead. But I will cover that with you uh, next week. But if you want to get a little head start on it, because it is a, a tough chapter, uh, take a look. That was chapter four. I'll try to mention that from my notes for tonight. So uh, chapter 24, the one I just went over, uh, page 418. Sorry. Chapter 24, and at the end of the chapter, page 428, sorry about that, page 428, the end of page uh, of chapter 24, there are some questions. There's only like six questions, and they're easy. So look them up, and uh, if you get any questions, we'll talk about it. Okay, I will see you on next Monday.